Um, hello, my name is Chris Davidson. I am the EIR for uh, Startouts Growth Lab. Welcome to graduation uh, for the cohort number eight. This is a very special day for us. We have spent the last six months uh, working hand, uh, very uh, connected with eight amazing companies. You're gonna be hearing from six live today, one video, and unfortunately, uh, one of our Growth Lab members was not able to join us due to a personal situation. Um, so Bridget Jones with Chisel will not be presenting. Uh, with that said, um, you're gonna be hearing enough from Ryan and myself going further, uh, going further but I'd like to introduce um, Andres. Andres, everybody probably on this uh, call knows him. Uh, so he doesn't really need a big introduction, but he's the executive director uh, for Startout. And I have been working with him for about four or five years and he's a spectacular human. Uh, so thank you, Andres, for putting so much resource into the Growth Lab um, and over to you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, um, what a nice introduction. So first of all, thank you, Chris and Ryan for running this, uh, this show here. Amazing what you've done again, yet another year. Um, this is wonderful. So this is actually one of my favorite events of the year, celebrating the success of our passionate, brilliant, and dedicated entrepreneurs. I really don't want to say it any other way because every time we're celebrating CORE, I'm amazed by not just how amazing, how wonderful and great and successful they are, but also what great human beings they are. So that is wonderful, but in the end, right, we still want results. So let me talk a little bit about the results of the Startup Growth Lab. 44 companies have graduated. Uh, in, in uh, eight cohorts uh, since 2017. Now, this is a pretty amazing number. We've raised a combined $304 million and are currently raising another 100. They've created, those 44 companies have created 3,500 3, jobs and have a revenue run rate of nearly $250, uh, $250 million. This is an amazing achievement. And honestly, that puts the Startup Growth Lab in the top echelon of accelerators. And with the uh, cerebral of cohort six, we celebrated our first unicorn of the program. You know, with the 3,500 people that you and your predecessor hired and the successful companies you are building, you are turning into activists for our cause in the best possible sense. You're empowering our community. And this is the most exciting part of this event and we couldn't be prouder of you. Of course, with each round and each hire, you up the ante and feed that virtuous cycle. So congratulations to all of you today. Thank you for your contributions to Startup, to our community, but more importantly, in the grand scheme of things, to our economy and to our society. Thanks to you, thanks to your successes, the narrative changes what LGBTQ people can do for our country, for sons of daughters, for brothers and sisters of people who might still have an issue with us being as successful as we are. With that, I'm excited to welcome Tom Gaynor, partner of the law firm DLA Piper, who are generous partners in this venture. And on a more personal level, I'm excited to welcome Tom as the co-founder of the Growth Lab. Over to you, Tom. Thank you so much, Andres. Um, and I cannot imagine a more exciting endeavor that have started this opportunity with you in uh, just a handful of years ago. And the stats that you just went through is just mind boggling. And when we sat at, uh, at, at, a, at a cafe in San Francisco and architected this out on a napkin, I never would have imagined the success that we've been able to generate uh, because of the entrepreneurs, because of the folks that are in this cohort and the seven preceding cohorts. And because of Chris and the team and the support of the board and the support of all of our sponsors, including my own DLA, um, that really have driven the opportunity to be able to provide uh, a, 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 an opportunity for the LGBTQ entrepreneurism that is going to drive the economic equality for our community on a go forward basis and change the world for the better in so many different ways with products, with innovation, with technology, and with the social contributions that these companies and the, and the founders and the entrepreneurs are going to continue to make. This is but just another 
uh, step on that long journey. This is not goodbye. This is thank you so much and best of luck for the journey that we're going to continue on ahead with. And I couldn't be more happy for the success of this particular cohort and more grateful for the investment that you make in this opportunity and that you make to make the growth lab the success that it is and that it can be and that it will continue to be for future cohorts. So thank you, congratulations, and all eyes are on you for how you're going to continue to change the world tomorrow for the better. Chris, thanks to you. Tom, grateful for you. Um, why don't we just give you a quick, for those of you that don't know what the growth lab, is, growth lab is, I'll give you a very quick rundown. And then Ryan is gonna introduce um, uh, the lineup of speakers. So Growth Lab is a six month accelerator program uh, where we basically work with anywhere from eight to 10 companies for those six months. Um, one of the criteria is that one of the co-founders has to be LGBTQ plus. And what we do is we create a dedicated curriculum specifically for each company. We try and meet them exactly where they are. Um, so we'll have one growth plan per company that will be different than another. That's very unique as it relates to accelerator programs out there. We really try and meet the needs of every individual and meet them where they are and help them to get to the next level. Uh, with that said, various companies are in different stages and we look forward to working with all of them in all the stages. Um, so that's kind of the, the functionality of the growth lab. What, what is it really? I like to say it's the um, maybe the LGBTQ plus golf course or country club, or it's the LGBTQ plus, um, you know, queer center for entrepreneurs. It's a place where you can have eight to 10 like-minded people, all with the same background, uh, being able to share authentically, share their successes, share their failures, share their dreams. It's a really, really special opportunity. Uh, I like to think that Ryan and I put together some very interesting programming and curriculum, but the most interesting and special component is how these companies interact. Uh, Ryan created something um, two cohorts ago called Group Office Hours, where we all share together. Uh, and I will have to be honest, I think the best advice and or suggestions or strategy doesn't come from Ryan or, ourselves, or myself, it comes from the other participants, the other entrepreneurs. Uh, with that said, I just want to say, you know, to the cohort, um, I, you know, this, I, I can't cry today because it's no tears until Tuesday per Tom Gaynor. Um, so, you know, I am just honored that you participate so wholeheartedly. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for continuing to support the cause. As Andra says, you know, we are, you know, all part of the mission together. Um, with that said, I will transition over to Ryan and Ryan is going to introduce the lineup. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> um, before I, I do that, I just want to say a few things. I want to give a huge congratulations to everyone in this cohort. Um, every cohort that we've run through this program is unique. And Chris and I are very fortunate um, to come into this experience with hope of uh, guiding these entrepreneurs through this cohort with hope of growing their business and um, helping them develop professionally. Um, and as members of the LGBTQ plus community, I think everyone here has experienced some sort of um, adversary and they've had, because of that, they've been able to build uh, resilience. And that resilience is uh, one of the reasons why I think that the statistics that Andre shared are so impactful and so unique. Um, but with that actually comes a huge sense of empathy. And while we spend a significant amount of time um, going over pitch decks, talking about web development, marketing, fundraising, um, any number of things. I think one of the most important things within this community is the community itself and the founders and the support that they provide to one another. The magic here, um, as Chris said, doesn't come from him or I. Um, it comes from the people who are participating in this program. So we are indebted to you for doing that. Um, so with that, I'd just like to say, I know that being a founder is incredibly difficult, um, but you have a family here with Startout and within each other. And you are, if you join Startout, or if you're interested in Startout Growth Lab, um, 
it's an opportunity to connect with people who are come from a background of uh, that's similar to yours that um, may be very uh, unique, but is in a very, very special way, a community that is um, very hard to come by in most places, especially as an entrepreneur. So with that, um, I would love to kick this off by introducing Paige at Oddpop, and she's going to tell her or tell us about her video marketplace. Thanks, Ryan. So I'm Paige Williams, and I'm the CEO and founder of Oddpop. But before I was a founder, I was a storyteller. When I was 18 and realized that I was a gay gal living in Mississippi, um, I had grown up Southern Baptist and my parents totally freaked out. And I was at the Waffle House with my girlfriend and my dad's truck rolls through the parking lot and he motions for me to come outside. And I go outside and I say, what's up daddy? And he says, you need to get home. Your mom is out hunting for you with a shotgun. And that was the beginning of, well, a lot of stuff as you can imagine, but my parents started an ex-gay ministry. And little did I know that 13 years later, I would be accepting my 10th award at a film festival telling that story and how people ultimately can come together and love each other in, even when we disagree. I went on to make some more uh, movies that changed hearts and minds, affected national policy, raised millions of dollars. And then in 2013, I decided to 1 million X myself. Because what happened through my film career is that I would go to film festivals and I would meet distributors and I would meet other filmmakers and I would get inspired and I would find jobs. And I thought, this needs to happen online. So I started Oddpop. It's a video platform that connects creators, video creators, filmmakers to opportunities. We've had a great track record of execution to date. We've worked with some very notable brands like Dell and GoDaddy. We have 250,000 registered members and of those 75,000 are registered as filmmakers. Uh, we have a video shelf of 14,000 videos, which equals to 4.9 million minutes of video supply. We've reached every country but three in the world. And I'm proud to say that our membership is 60% diverse. We have championed diverse filmmakers from the beginning because I'm a diverse filmmaker. And we've been featured across some press and news. And when I started the company in 2013, it was a very different time. And now the world's caught up. And we know that the future of sales is video. 85% of customers want more video from businesses. It increases sales 6X and it increases engagement 13 times. But the problem is, how does businesses affordably get video that resonates and sells to an audience? And then how do video creatives and filmmakers find those opportunities to work with these businesses and brands and get their stories out in the world? But there's a gap in the marketplace between affordable and high quality custom video. And that's our sweet spot that Oddpop serves. So our product is software that operates turnkey video contests and film challenges. Um, we can call for video submissions, accept, watch and review videos, award prizes, engage influencers and creatives, grow a brand's business. Brands love us because they get hundreds of videos and the rights to them, earned viral social media, lead generation. It builds their community and they have these super fun, engaging marketing campaigns that everyone loves to play with. This was a campaign we did for GoDaddy. They gave away $21,000. They got 250 video submissions from around the world and their campaign was seen over 20 million times. We charge $50,000 for that service. There's only so many um, big brand campaigns that we can sell. And that's why I started the Growth Lab was to open a video marketplace. We have a product also where the filmmakers have their own portfolios and upload their videos and showcase their work. They can get hired, they build their audience, and they distribute their films and videos. They can upgrade for $14 a month to get extra incentives. And why I started the Growth Lab was to test a video freelance marketplace. And we've had some really great success with our 75,000 global creators 
and we've tested it on about 30 small businesses. Our model is to charge 20% on the fee. The average budget, what we've seen so far, is a small business pays a filmmaker $2,500, say, for a product video. And then we get 500 of that. If we can reach 400 million customers by December 2022, we'll be at 1 million just through this one business model. How big is this opportunity? It's huge. By 2027, video spend will be $100 billion globally. There's 31.7 US small and medium enterprise businesses. Odd Pop's market share is 100 million a year, reaching 100,000 SMEs by 2028. So to Growth Lab. Every year we bring our community together and it's like a big press release and a fun event for Oddfest. And this is our fifth year. It actually happens next week. I invite you all to attend. It's virtual, it's free. And you can learn how to grow your brand, business, company, nonprofit mission through compelling storytelling. Some of the hot panels are the science behind storytelling, storytelling that scales, the next generation of video creators. And we have some really great speakers. So go ahead and register at oddbot.com slash oddfest. My second goal was to create a marketing funnel for the video marketplace. So in the time of the um, accelerator, we hired a company, we've tested some SEO, we started creating um, a marketing plan, we did um, uh, Google ad buy tests, social media legion ad tests, and we found that the average cost of acquisition for a small business is $23, which is pretty great. This was extremely helpful for me with the growth lab. This was the meat and potatoes um, of the experience and the value that I got out of it. And so for my business, it was for hugely beneficial beyond just meeting the wonderful people who were in my cohort and Chris and Ryan. This is part of the growth plan that I created in order to let the world know about Oddpop. Everyone needs video. What I have to do is let the world know about us. And so we created um, a very detailed plan around how to do that. And this is just the highlight of that work. We are raising a million dollars in funding. Uh, we're 20% to the goal and throughout the lab, I updated the fundraising deck based on what I learned through the growth lab and the financial model and the video marketplace. So what's next for Odd Pop post start out? We're gonna continue to raise, we're gonna scale revenue to a million a year through that video marketplace. And we are actually launching our freelance video marketplace app in December. Um, so if you need video, please go on oddpop.com and you can get started. And then in December, it'll actually be in your pocket where you can just find a video creative and hire them. So thanks, Chris. Thanks, Ryan. To everyone in my cohort, I really enjoyed getting to know you. And thank you, Stardall. Thank you, Paige. That was great. Thank you, Paige. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce our next uh, company. So Oscar uh, is the founder and CEO of Thimble, um, an education tech company that I wish existed when I was a little baby nerd. Um, so I'm really excited to have him present. Uh, Oscar. Oscar, over to you. You're on mute. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Oscar Pedroso. I'm the founder and CEO of Symbol. We're a K-12 curriculum that teaches kids robotics, codecs, and technology skills uh, for homeschooling and for all different types of school programs. So this is me. I actually taught uh, math and computer science at an inner city school about 10 years ago. Uh, this is Monica and Tyra. These were one of my favorite students when I taught. Uh, their family was from Honduras, and that's where my family is from, and I particularly grew close to them. But these girls used to show up to class so excited, uh, and they were particularly excited because they wanted to become aeronautical engineers. But unfortunately, we were in one of the poorest school districts in New York, and so without the right programs in place, they and hundreds of other kids and millions of other kids in similar school districts would not get the programs and resources they needed to achieve these potential dreams. And uh, 
after contemplating whether I wanted to go into startups, I, I, I really wanted to solve this problem. Um, I've spent most of my life in education, and this is something I really, really wanted to solve. And so I created Thimble. Uh, so it's a, a curriculum that's made up of a variety of different uh, resources for kids. Uh, but one, it's a K-12 curriculum that includes lessons. There are uh, 15 different types of reusable robotics and coding kits where kids can build various types of electronic projects. And there's also online training for teachers to implement this successfully either during the school day or after school programs or similar programs outside of schools as well. Examples of projects could be kids building their own uh, Wi-Fi robot and coding the app to control that robot. Uh, they could also build a weather station to learn more about agricultural technology where they're using sensors like temperature sensors, moisture, all different types of sensors to uh, tell you the local forecast in a particular geography. Or they can learn about audio engineering and experience what it's like to be become their own DJ, uh, play their own tunes, or play uh, tunes that already exist. So as far as like how we make money and the models that we have in place, we have two different types of business models. So we have a direct-to-consumer model where we sell to families at home, uh, homeschoolers. Uh, last year, everybody was pretty much forced into homeschooling, uh, but it's a monthly subscription where kids receive a kit in the mail once a quarter, and then they receive two classes, two live classes a week taught by one of our instructors and their monthly contests to get kids competitive and think creatively about the projects that they're working on. Uh, the one that I'm really, really interested in and why I started Symbol uh, is the school program, uh, because we wanted to make this accessible to all kids, particularly underserved kids, women, and students with special needs, which were particularly the kids that were left in the dust when I taught um, at the school that I mentioned earlier. Um, and this type of program is a turnkey solution that's more of a school package, and it includes reusable kits for classrooms, a lesson software, and professional development for those teachers. Our traction on the direct-to-consumer side uh, we have about 1,500 families all across the country. Uh, we're doing about 35K in MRR, uh, are growing up 20% month over month. Um, we have about 5% churn, and our lifetime value is about $2,300, which we're still getting a hang of. And then our customer acquisition cost can vary depending on the season, but it averages at around $80. The attraction that I'm most excited about, though, is our school business, as I mentioned earlier. Currently, we're working with 16 districts. Uh, the average quote right now is about $12,000, and we're, uh, we're reaching out to about 85,000 uh, administrators and teachers at these schools. Um, we've generated uh, this year $250,000 in sales cumulative, and our average sales cycle is about four months, give or take. We've had success getting awarded into various school districts. Uh, most of which you'll notice are in Texas, uh, but we're, the, the way we're looking at this market is building our, our core in Texas and expanding outwards. We're based in Buffalo, New York, so we've had some success selling into schools here, but uh, we're focused more in the South at the moment. But with just these contracts alone, we're looking at about a four to $5 million opportunity that we're going after at the moment. Uh, our school business model so it's made up of three different factors right now. So there's uh, the reusable project-based kits, which are 149. So for a set of 50, it's a little over $7,000, but they're reusable so they can continue to use them year after year. There's also an annual recurring license where the schools pay $28 per student seat for kids and teachers to access the lessons to help build their projects from start to finish. And then there's professional development where we can train the teachers virtually which has been the, the majority of cases at the moment. And then we've also done in-person training as well. Uh, our unit economics at the moment, uh, so going off of the average school sale, which is about $12,000, and that includes 50 kits, 100 licenses, and two professional development sessions. And our margin on that is about 70%. Um, our largest PO at the moment is about $75,000, just to give you an example of how the purchase orders can range. 
Uh, our growth over the last six months while we've been part of Growth Labs has been very exciting. So we came into the program not knowing a whole lot about working with school districts. Uh, we had a lot on paper, but hadn't really executed a whole ton. But uh, in March, we had done about $15,000 in school sales. Uh, over the last six months leading up to this, we've done about $250,000 in school sales, so about 333% increase. Uh, and then as far as what we're doing right now to actively reach out, uh, for every 1,000 leads, uh, we're generating about $5,000 in about two months. Uh, in about four months, we're ge generating twice as much. Um, and that this is really where we're looking to maximize uh, our potential which is really just we're limited by the bandwidth at the moment. So we're currently growing our team. Uh, but our, our um, milestone for this year is we're projecting to hit about $700,000 in revenue. And our uh, audacious goal for next year is to hit 2 million by the end of 2022. So that is what we're actively working towards. My, our, our goal is going into the program. Uh, one was to, to raise a million dollars on Republic, which is a crowd equity platform. Uh, to hire three sales development representatives to assist with business development, so doing cold calling, demos, and closing. And our third goal was to sell an annual recurring contract to about 35 schools. So how did we do? Uh, so our first goal was to raise a million on Republic. I think my cohort got tired of me telling them that we were that we were going to launch any moment. <laughs> our original date was to launch in May, and you know, it was a lot more of a cumbersome process than we thought. But as of today, we launched live on Republic this past Monday, and uh, we uh, have raised about $173,000 to date. Uh, the deadline for the campaign is February 26th of 2022. So we're almost about 20% to goal at the moment. Um, it took six months to launch, but we, we finally did it. And I've been wearing my PR hat the last couple of days. Our second goal was to hire three SDRs. And uh, we hired three, uh, Rosa and Rob. One did not work out, unfortunately, but we're hiring one more in November and I'm interviewing candidates this week. So I'm really excited about this because this is how we're gonna be able to get in contact with more schools. Our third goal uh, was to sell annual recurring deals to 35 schools. How did we do? Uh, we closed 20 re recurring school deals, almost got there, but quite didn't, uh, but we were, but at the same time, we were awarded 16 district-wide contracts. 12 out of the 16 are three to five year contracts. Some of these are guaranteed revenue. Others are more sort of like permission to sell into the district, which just lowers the barrier for us to sell to schools. Uh, and a lot of this, we're gonna be building pipeline for 2022. These are the school districts where we've been awarded. The biggest one here is Dallas and Atlanta. Um, and the, a lot of these are, are probably districts you've heard of or maybe not heard of in Texas. Um, what's next for us? Um, so I'm really, really pumped about all of our momentum that we've had during the program. Um, the fourth quarter, we're going to try and raise 750K by the end of the year on Republic. See if we have a good four months to close that. We're going to hire one SDR in November. We're going to try and win three more contracts, which have already been submitted. And we're going to try and close 100K in sales by the end of the year um, in this quarter. Um, leading into 2022, uh, we want to close that 1 million round and uh, we want to hire one customer success person and curriculum writer to help us continue to create content for our lesson library. Uh, we're going to try and win five school contracts per quarter in 2022. And we're also going to try and close $300,000 worth of business to get to that $2 million goal I mentioned earlier. So I just want to say a big thank you. It's been such a ride. I can't wait to keep in touch with everyone and also meet future cohorts. Uh, it's been such a blast. I've learned a lot about myself. Um, I've learned to be very vulnerable. A big shout out to Chris for helping me think a little more broadly about taking risks. I think that's one of the hardest things I've had to do is just letting things go. But um, uh, I would appreciate everybody's support. Please feel free to visit our Republic um, campaign on Republic code uh, slash symbol. But thank you so much. Hey, Oscar, Ryan's going to transition to the next company, but I just have to say it's been such a pleasure and, and Paige as well. I didn't get a chance to jump in there, but both the two of you, um, it's just been such a pleasure having you and Paige, you really um, 
your dedication to sharing stories and being vulnerable and authentic has been spectacular. Oscar, your change on risk is something that I'm so proud of. Uh, really, it's look at those numbers, like way to go. You know, Ryan and I, you interviewed for cohort seven. We asked you to do some work. You came back, you blew us away and you blew us away in this cohort. So um, all, all to you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, Oscar, um, amazing work as always. Uh, Chris mentioned it, but um, you know, there are some people who apply for Growth Lab. They don't get in the first time and we'll say like, you know, we, we wanna see you go from this point to this point. And Oscar was one of those people. And um, the dedication and work ethic that you showed in that time has only increased since then. And I'm so confident about your future and the future of your company. I'm just very, very impressed. So proud of you. So thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, we're going to be moving on to uh, Sean and his company, Buffalo Market, um, which is disrupting the food distribution industry. So I will let Sean take it away. Hi. Um, I'm really excited to uh, get to talk about um, what we did during start out uh, because we had such a high growth um, period. And often you can set these hard goals for yourself um, because it pushes you to get somewhere in between. But we actually um, did something that makes me feel quite humble. Uh, I did want to thank um, Chris and Ryan for really countless self-giving that uh, you've given and Tom. Uh, for being a sponsor. That's really an important um, opportunity that you're giving so many uh, founders uh, in this cohort and in future ones, uh, Andreas and all the team at Startout. Um, but I, before I talk about Buffalo Market, I thought I would share just about why I wanted to be part of Startout and uh, in Growth Lab. I joined a long time ago as a member I, uh, I led a company called uh, Hornet. It's a gay social network. Uh, it's a technology. I lived in San Francisco. Being part, out, part of a community of startup founders just made sense. Um, and so I joined as a member. I, um, I met many friends there. I um, helped friends get jobs through Startout. Uh, I hired people. Uh, I solved really... Um, great problems, even like complex problems. I mean, there's just so many smart LGBT um, software <laughs> engineers that um, uh, I found endless um, sense of community and access and resources by being part of Startout. Um, but I joined during uh, this, this new startup that I, I did because um, it was COVID and I really needed as community of founders that would push me and listen to any struggles that we had along the way. Uh, and that's exactly uh, what I got. And the results um, have been something that really helped me uh, flourish. Um, and, uh, you know, one one thing I'll, I'll say is that um, the um, network of people that we have as LGBT is something that's uh, so powerful. And then when you're a founder, you have so much in common with other people who really burn the midnight oil and struggle. And so it's been such a special uh, experience. And I, I look forward to all the people who get to be in the future cohort. So thanks for all the people that made that possible. Uh, so Buffalo Market, um, I'm going to teach you about a food distribution company. Um, uh, we grew during COVID. We didn't exist before COVID. Uh, we have $115 million of gross merchandising value booked. Um, and it's a big space. I mean, it's practically a trillion dollar uh, 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 market. Um, and we do what we're doing um, by competing in the direct distribution space currently. Um, and that is really like high touch, extra distribution where stuff in the stores, getting merchandise and inventoried. Um, and we've got some tricks on how we do that efficiently. It's better for the planet. 
we go work with mission driven brands, mission driven can mean anything for better for you or better for the planet, plant based, etc. Um, and those are all growing and all grew during uh, COVID. Uh, DSD is actually the way that all the top brands actually exist and thrive. There's a couple reasons why that. Um, they're often high velocity products. So think of beverage like Coca-Cola that flies off the shelf and it's hard to store tons, actual tons of it in the back of shelves. So you gotta deliver it all the time. Um, and then other products can't be stored forever like bread it just goes bad. Um, so you have to deliver it constantly. Um, that's hard to do well. Um, it may sound simple, but it's actually logistics is not easy. Um, and so we, um, you know, software eats the world, software eats food distribution. That's our focus. I'm surprised no one else worked on it before us. Um, uh, so we make our routes run efficiently. Like we can efficiently can mean less gas, less time, any of those things, it's better for everyone. Um, we use a tiny bit of AI um, and it's helpful. Um, and then we do sales automation, which is just natural. Every single SaaS company does that. We just kind of apply a SaaS model to food distribution sales. Um, and then we're efficient. We don't have trucks going to places they don't need to go with one pallet. And our uh, competitors all do that. They're just stuck in the ancient times. Uh, here's what our optimized routes look like. I didn't put these pins here, a computer did, it saved me time. Um, we currently serve um, a big part of America, California's a big food industry, um, and we're growing. So expect that map to uh, expand. Uh, these are uh, some of our cu customers, big places like Costco, little small specialty places like Air One. All these places, even Walmart, are interested in our mission-driven brands. The food tastes better. It's better when we deliver it. It's fresher. Um, lots of advantages. And this is the growth we achieved during COVID. I mean, absolutely remarkable. Uh, uh, Chris and Ryan and cohort members were there when, you know, we were racing against the clock, having growth and uh, trying to hit our numbers and had a pretty big uh, pivot along the way. Um, and so can't say uh, thanks enough. Um, and the, there's just two founders, we're uh, both LGBT men. And I think that makes us better founders. You're um, being LGBT often means you're kind of a contrarian, you're a natural born uh, fighter, we have to be. In fact, so that's how my last company got its name, when it's our, our you social species, which means they're altruistic and basically just humans and, and few species are, are like that, um, but we're stronger together. And that's what I got out of Start Out. So thank you. I look forward to um, a strong year ahead of us, a Buffalo market, but probably a lifetime of connection and involvement with Start Out. Sean, thank you so much. And you did a better job than any of us talking about the true benefits of start out and growth lab um, and you've been one of our biggest supporters so i just want to really a commend your growth and b commend what you continue to give back to the community uh is really really thoughtful and, and impressive on both accounts um and um you just are clearly on on your well on your way so thank you sean All right. Um, sorry, I think I froze a little bit. I'm getting the message that my internet connection is unstable. So the timing is great because I'm about to uh, stream the video that we have for John for Peacemaker. So um, please bear with me as I go ahead and get this up and running. Hey, everyone. I'm John McLaughlin, co-founder and CEO of Peacemaker. I am so sorry I cannot join in person today so we get this recording. I am absolutely pleased to be presenting Peacemaker at our Cohort 8 Startout graduation. Let me click all the right buttons and we're going to get over to the screen sharing. Here we go.
I hope you can see my screen. So of course, what is Peacemaker? Peacemaker stops data breaches. We exist in the application data security space. We're servicing B2B tech companies, uh, of course, with a, a focus on regulated industries. So those companies that really feel that pinch when it comes to data security, ending all of those breaches that you see creeping into the news that violate our privacy, data theft, all of that stuff. The problem space is huge. The number of companies that need these services just in that regulated space. The big picture problem here is that there's no standard for how to actually protect that data inside your applications to end those attacks. And there's not enough data security engineers in the world to go around for everyone to use them to keep reinventing our own solutions in all 37,000 of those companies. And so. Here at Peacemaker, we have developed end-to-end -end encryption as a service through simple, proven, and affordable security techniques. The innovation really focuses on taking well-understood, proven techniques and combining them together into a fully assembled product that is ready to ride. Of course, our sales pipeline has lots of exciting POCs. We are still pre-revenue, though, as we review our goals. And so our first goal here at Startup was to have six to 12 happy and active small and medium businesses using Peacemaker. And today I'm very happy to share that we have 19 SMBs in POCs with Peacemaker. So Startup helped us significantly with expert office hours, helping us modify and hone in our messaging, helped us with SEO on our website to get on those search results that we needed to land on content marketing, ramp ups, giving us lots of great feedback to how to reiterate our messaging within our content that we were using. And of course, Network Q, which led to incredibly warm leads, just spectacular and within our target market as well. And we also used this opportunity to ramp up a security podcast of Silicon Valley, a great way to start with an authentic give to potential customers. Our goal too was to close 1 million in funding against a pre-seed safe. And today I'm super happy to share that we've closed 95K, which is a huge improvement to where we started in the beginning, which was pretty much zero. So the challenges are, you know, we're still pre-revenue demonstrating product market fit. Of course, startup helped us significantly with great feedback on pitches, warm intros with investors directly. And of course, Chris's big plan helped keep those investors engaged after the first meeting. So a huge thanks to that. And our goal number three was to have one to two go-to-market technical partners. Today, we don't have any official go-to-market technical partners, but that's okay. The challenges around that are our operational maturity and it's somewhat connected to our funding. How startup really helped us with that was with networking. And we had great discussions with Ryan on how to position partnerships as a win-win situation for everyone involved. And at the same time, we've made great progress towards all of these goals. There are new developments in the works that I would encourage you to just keep an eye on. And it's difficult for me to talk about at the moment, but these are coming and it's going to be really great for Peacemaker. Everyone's been head down, busting their chops, make this work. So I would just like to end by saying thank you uh, to start out, it was an amazing experience. It's an amazing network and support and community. We found ways to give back to the LGBTQ community, both professionally and personally while building a company. And I absolutely plan to continue to support in the future through philanthropy, underrepresented minorities, but especially LGBTQ underrepresented minorities through organizations like Startup. So thank you. We'll leave it at that. I will see you guys uh, next time, and uh, thank you again. Well, John, when you see this recording later, um, your energy, your enthusiasm, your joy is infectious to everybody, and you have connected with more people in our pre in other previous cohorts than anyone else in this cohort, and um, your use of Network Q has been spectacular. Thank you, John. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. And John, when you see this, thank you so much for sharing and taking the time to put together a video for us. Um, I'm going to move on to Deal Engine and uh, Vanessa, who is creating an equal opportunity for 
all entrepreneurs to succeed with her company. And I'm excited for her to share this. She has an amazing story. So uh, Vanessa, it's all you. Great. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Great. All right. Hello, my name is Vanessa Archambeau Morales, uh, co-founder and CTO of Deal Engine, a data-driven self-service platform, empowering founders to achieve traction and funding, regardless of their background or connections. So I personally know the challenges early startup founders face, especially underrepresented founders face in finding traction for the company and securing that early money. I'm a queer Latina software engineer. And a couple of years ago, I had a great idea for a startup, but I didn't have an accredited network to fundraise a friends and family around to get my idea off the ground. So I put it back on the shelf, um, but now I'm building the very platform that would have helped me, an approach that can reshape how early startups get mentorship support and access to capital. So what is Deal Engine? Uh, and who gets funded in the landscape? There are an estimated 25 million US entrepreneurs seeking investment, 99.7% of which never achieve angel or VC investment. And those that do get funding, Black and Latinx founders only receive 2.6% of total funding. So Deal Engine can help startups figure out their fundraising path. So in order to help founders find traction for their companies and raise early money, uh, to help prove out their ideas, we built our founders platform where founders enter their KPIs and metrics into our fundraising readiness platform. Uh, and uh, where we provide founders with tools, resources, and a guided path to traction and viability. And we analyze metrics throughout and give constructive feedback. So from industry reports, we know that team and product market fit account for 80% of startup failures. So for this reason, we built an analytical framework that measures those key drivers and we roll all the measures into our deal score, which is an easy to understand measure of the current uh, company traction and viability. We provide step-by-step -step guides to founders uh, based on their vertical and company stage and team chemistry assessments to ensure founders are building diverse and resilient teams. And founders can explore an array of fundraising options and resources in addition to a crowdfunding path for raising money. So some updates from this month, really exciting. Um, we launched our second beta cohort to test out our app in October. We have 50 companies on the platform so far, and we've gotten great feedback and testimonials about our app, which was one of our goals uh, to be able to have testimonials to show to investors and just outwardly. And we got our first company referral partnership with the Northern California uh, Small Business Development Center. Uh, so our tool will be available to 16,000 companies that they service, and we are developing partnerships with other SBDC branches uh, throughout California and the United States. And we are developing our first major accelerator partnership that should launch early next year. And we got our first data partnership with UC Berkeley in the Citarja Center. So super exciting. So our first goal uh, at Growth Lab was we wanted to expand and improve our founder portal and tool set and improve our data infrastructure sourcing and scoring and hire a product team. And so we did all that. Thank you for all of your help, Growth Lab. And so our new goal now is to develop our team psychometrics model to flesh out our deal score, uh, to be able to help our founders that we're helping uh, develop um, well-rounded teams. So for team psychometrics, we are working with the Berkeley Sitarja Center we have an advisory agreement with the co-author of the Berkeley Innovation Index uh, to base our deal, our model off of, and it allows us to capture data about startup teams and convert it into feedback in the sport to help build diverse and resilient teams. So that's gonna be a super exciting part of our platform. Our second goal was to launch a crowdfunding platform to become post-revenue. Um, we did not do that. So our new goal is what, from a lot of the direction that we got from Growth Lab, was to monetize our current founder platform to become post-revenue sooner. And then once we generate revenue from there, then we can build our crowdfunding platform. So thank you, Chris, for all of the feedback on that. So 2021, this month, we're working to monetize the app. Uh, and hopefully next month, we will launch that and um, start really hammering on that. And then in 2022, hopefully we'll launch our crowdfunding platform. And so the monetization of our founder platform um, then we're, we're exploring the structure, but we will do upsells and monthly fees in a freemium uh, structure. And then we're launching SEO and heavy social media campaigns uh, starting next month to drive traffic. And so our third goal 
was to raise $5 million in the seed round. But our current goal is immediate pre-seed fundraise of 300,000 to extend our runway and get us post revenue with our founder platform. Um, and we're hoping that will bridge the gap to get us to the point where we can be self-sustaining and then move on to our seed round. So our go-to-market um, uh, plan is partner referrals. We have our first couple partner referral uh, partnerships coming up to accept rejected deal flow from funds and accelerators to get companies onto our platform to help them improve. And of course, influence and networks and media. And um, thank you, Growth Lab, for helping us uh, think through and formulate our strategy on that that we will be implementing soon. And so our traction over time has been pretty cool considering we were very young when we started Growth Lab. Um, we were only a couple of months old. And um, I'm just really thrilled at how far we've come in the time that we've been in Growth Lab. So I can't thank you all enough. And so how you can help, um, we are raising our 300,000 pre-seed. Um, and so any VC or angel connections to help us extend our runway, help, uh, help us market our platform to get the word out to startups and any intros to data or fund or accelerator to form partnerships to get rejected deal flow would be amazing. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let's do legend. Uh, Vanessa, amazing. It's been quite the ride. Um, you really have just kind of hunkered through um, relearning your business inside and out and you know, with pivot. And it's just, it's something that is really special and you're well on your way. And to you and Cal, congratulations. Um, those partnerships, Cal, you're right. They're amazing, impressive. Keep them coming, keep them going. I stand corrected. Um, good job. Well done, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to now pass the torch to Mandy and Avalis. Uh, she's created a personalized search engine for the food and beverage delivery, serv or delivery services. So uh, Mandy, uh, the floor is all yours. Hello. Um, early technical difficulties, my headphones didn't work. So <clears throat> if you all hear my cat snoring behind me, I'm sorry, that's, that's just where we are. All right. Okay, hi, hi friends. I am Mandy Poston. I am the founder and CEO of Availist. Availist is a um, custom search engine for food and beverage delivery. Really what we do is connect users with more local delivery services, um, help them compare across those options by what matters most to them, and ultimately save time and money when ordering groceries, dinner, snacks, and drinks. A little bit of background about myself. I have over 15 years of experience in operations and product technology. I am a startup veteran. Uh, this is my second startup. <clears throat> I was a founding member of uh, my former startup, which we grew successfully bootstrapped, and I am obsessed with food. Um, I grew up in kitchens. My uncle is a chef. My grandmother worked as a butcher, and my grandfather made what is to date the best pizza I've ever tasted. Um, and I say that as someone who used to live in New York, so you can know that I really mean it. So every day I wake up and the first thought that I have is what are we gonna do for dinner? I say that out loud and it really bugs the heck out of my fiance. But during the pandemic, that question changed from what are we gonna do for dinner to what are we gonna do and how the heck are we gonna procure what we need? And one night when we were talking with friends about that very issue, they were saying how concerned they were about potentially exposing their new baby to COVID because they would have to go to the store because they couldn't navigate the local uh, grocery delivery market. And I really wanted to fix that problem for them. I started thinking more and more about that problem. I couldn't walk away. And what I realized is the problem is that the delivery landscape is chaos. There are too many services doing similar things. Local legislation is constantly changing the options on those services and the fees that they charge. Customers are paying too much and waiting too long and businesses are paying too much to reach those customers. 
given my background, I was dangerous enough to think that maybe I could take on this challenge. So I got a team together and we built a Veilist. So what we do is really cut through that noise. We aggregate, organize, and personalize the delivery experience. So by having the most delivery options in a simple UI, organizing that logically for easy cross-platform search, and then allowing the user to customize that experience, we do two things. We create a better ordering experience for customers, and we reduce customer acquisition costs for businesses. Just a little insight into the market that we're working in. It is very large. <laughs> um, the food and beverage delivery market is expected to grow to 192 billion by 2025. We are just a percentage of that. Um, so to arrive at our SOM, we actually cut that up, not just by US delivery users, but a known subset of people that already shop competitively between grocery delivery apps. And that's what brought us to our SOM of 2 billion. And the way that we make money is uh, delivery services pay us for the referrals. We have a paid premium tier and ad revenue. So background aside, when we started with Growth Lab, we set, we put our goals in place. We have numeric targets for the end of the year, which we're on pace to uh, meet and beat, but they're built around these three pillars, which is to execute contracts with the delivery services, to grow our user base and to earn revenue. And the goals are important, but when I think about one of the biggest benefits that I got out of Growth Lab, I really think about the work that we did identifying the obstacles that were in the way of achieving those goals and the time that I spent with Chris and Ryan naming those obstacles, giving them a face and like starting to talk our way through them so we could achieve the goals. And for me, it was team size. I was a bottleneck. Uh, the app was in beta, so not launched to the public and funding. And I'm proud to say we made a lot of progress in all of those areas. Um, here is our little team at the start of the cohort. Here we are now. Um, if you've got a sharp eye, you'll notice that is definitely a stock photo in the bottom right corner. Um, but <laughs> that's just because I didn't have time to get a headshot from our newest edition because we're growing so fast. Um, but we made really important growth with people in charge of marketing, uh, financial advice. We've added a couple key hires to the engineering team, which is all really important for our scale. And we're trying to click forward. Too far. There we go. Uh, we launched the app. This was a, a particularly tough one for me. <laughs> um, I. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I really kept wanted to keep iterating on the app. And I know Chris spent a lot of time urging me to just get it out there and you know, build in public and trust our user feedback that we had, which was uh, really positive. 90% of our testers liked the app and would recommend it in beta. So we did, and that's going exceptionally well. And uh, for fundraising during the cohort, we closed 30% of our uh, pre-seed round. And we are actually now in late stage conversations with uh, a number of in investors, larger investors, any one of which would take us to a minimum of 75% of the round. So once those obstacles got out of the way, the goals just sort of started to fall into place um, pretty easily. So we've executed contracts with delivery providers. I'm proud to say some of those are actually with large national delivery providers, which we thought would be a significantly longer sales cycle. Um, we've tripled our user base um, since launching the app, and we actually just uh, achieved some early revenue numbers last week. So we sort of squeaked that one in uh, at the last minute. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention with regard to start out and progress, one of the benefits of the growth lab is not just being able to talk with the other founders about projects, Pro progress being inspired by their progress, but also using their services. I was really fortunate to work with Maka and her team on a UX study, which really informed our roadmap. And um, I've joined the Deal Engine beta cohort, which is really going to help shape our fundraising strategy. So there's a lot of advantages to working alongside other businesses at different stages that can really help support you. In terms of what's next, um, we're working on our premium tier launch to accelerate the revenue. 
uh, the AI team is building out our smarter search engine. We are adding um, sales members in order to accelerate our go-to-market national expansion. And with that, I will say, you know, thank you to everyone. Start out DLA Piper. I learned a lot, especially about changing from an LLC to a C Corp. That was a fun adventure. And, um, you know, I'm really proud to be an alum and, uh, and I'm really excited that I get to stay in the Slack channel and still talk with people. So thanks very much. Uh, Mandy, my dog is like chewing something in the background. So hopefully nobody can hear that either. <laughs> You know, your vulnerability and ability to assess where you are and take constructive feedback is really, really, really impressive. And I just want to commend you. I mean, you talked about it here. I know a lot of people that wouldn't have put it on this platform and look at what is transitioning or transpiring, uh, transpiring since that has occurred. And I'm seeing it. I know you see it. I see kind of the joy in your face. It's it's happening, and it's all started with you know getting that app out. It was all the perfectionism and moving forward. And I'm really, really, really excited for you on what's next to come. And so I just want you to be really proud of yourself. And I know we all here are. And I said I wasn't going to cry. Damn it. So um, I win. All right. Nice. <laughs> Mandy gets bonus points. Um, Mandy, uh, thank you so much. Um, I am so grateful to have had you in this cohort and um, I'm very impressed with everything, um, all the progress you've made and again, your resilience. Um, I think you've done amazing things. So we're happy to have you to continue to be part of the community. Um, so we have come to our last company and our last founder. Um, I am going to introduce Maka uh, from Avo Academy. Um, she is helping aspiring designers transition into the UI and UX field. And uh, I'm very excited. I got to help you a little bit with your presentation today. So I know it's gonna be a blast. Um, thank you so much, Maka, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Um, let's see if I can get this. Okay, hopefully everybody can see that. Um, like Brian said, said um, my name is Maka and I'm the founder of Avo Academy. Uh, Avo Academy is an educational platform that helps people change careers into the UX UI design field through an affordable and short curriculum. Um, for those of you that don't know me, you may be wondering, what's your name? <laughs> um, my name is Maka, it's short for Macarena, like the song. Um, and I actually went to school for mechanical engineering at the University of Florida. I worked really hard to get my dream job at Boeing as um, a design engineering, designing parts for the interiors of planes. Um, unfortunately, I absolutely hated my job. I was really uh, unfulfilled and I just missed my friends and family. I had moved across the country um, for this job. So I actually moved back home and um, I taught myself design through YouTube. And after a long year, um, I actually ended up having a pretty successful career in the UX UI design field. Um, I worked for IBM and then PwC um, as a design consultant. So you may have heard me say UX UI design a bunch of times in the last minute or so. So what, what exactly is um, UX UI design and what does Ketchup have to do with it? Um, UI is the way something looks and UX is the way something works. So when we're talking about design, um, UI would be kind of how each of these bottles look and then UX is how you would actually use those bottles. And this applies to designing websites, designing apps, designing processes and any type of um, experience. What UX UI is not is it's not coding, it's not development and it's not graphic design. So hopefully that kind of clears it up so that the rest of this presentation uh, makes a little bit more sense. Um, so let me walk you through what it would look like to work with us if you were a student. Um, if you wanted to change careers, you would join our intro program 
And there you would learn the basics of UX UI design. And once you finish that program, you would join our Career Jumpstart program, and that's where we would help you get real world experience and eventually land a job. Our graduates of our programs are averaging a starting salary of about $79,000 a year. So in terms of our business model, um, we use some conservative numbers here to estimate our LTV and our CAC. And um, with about 50% of students completing the course, 80% joining the next course, and then 50% of grads getting jobs, we're sitting at an LTV of 3,600 and a CAC of about $300. So our growth over the last six months, um, when we started Growth Lab, we were about $36,000 um, in terms of monthly revenue. And last month um, we hit almost 140 um, and that's a 400% um, growth over these last six months. And the best part is since we are profitable, we've been able to fund this growth um, ourselves. And uh, we're on track to hit the following milestones. So this year we're gonna hit a million dollars in revenue and we have a plan um, to be able to hit 3 million next year. As part of Growth Lab, like a lot of the other speakers today um, said, we had to set some goals. And these were the goals that I set back in March. Um, I wanted to have 400 students enrolled in our program by today. And um, I wanted to free up a lot of my time. I was spending a lot of time on sales for the program. And the third goal was to launch two new specialization courses. And this was gonna be my way to increase our, our LTV. So with the first goal of the 400 students, um, we've definitely surpassed that goal. And not only have we surpassed that goal, um, but we made it on the best UX UI design bootcamp list for 2021. And it also plays in our favor um, that the list is alphabetical. So Alpha Academy is in the number one spot. <laughs> Um, for our second goal of freeing up our time, my time um, and spending less than 10 hours a week on sales, I'm currently spending less than one hour a week on sales. Um, and it was a pretty hard decision that I had to make in terms of growing the business and stepping away from the source of revenue, which was sales and being able to give up that control to somebody else, which is something that Growth Lab really helped with. Um, so... I hired a full-time, hired and trained a full-time sales rep. Her name's Carla. Um, she did things way differently for me. And I was really worried her conversion rate would be significantly lower than mine. Um, I pro probably drove all the other founders crazy talking about conversion rates and showing my spreadsheets during the program. Turns out her conversion rate is actually higher than mine. And um, I really just had to let go and let her uh, do things her own way, which also made me realize I should probably take a look at other parts of the business and, and start letting go um, in other things. So not only did I hire one full-time full -time sales rep, but I brought on a full team. Uh, in March, it was just me. And over the last six months, we've grown to 19 staff members. Um, I brought on a full-time co-founder, marketing advertising person, content, mentors, interns, um, a whole team. Um, and this has been, been great. For our third goal, and for launching a, a new specialization course and increasing LTV, um, we did launch one course and the sales did not go as expected. So we pivoted a little bit and created a new program, Career Jumpstart, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. And we did a beta with 10 students that was free. And then as of today, we've enrolled 30 students paid into that program, which is about $150,000 of committed revenue. So I think we ultimately hit this goal because we've increased LTV, um, but we pivoted on, on the how we were gonna do that. And on LTV and revenue, Growth Lab really helped me think through our 18 month um, growth plan. And without getting into too much detail, here are actual projections for Next year, 2022, um, this is our plan to be actually be able to hit that 3 million revenue goal um, without taking any outside investment. Um, so, because as, as I mentioned, since we are profitable, we've been able to just reinvest um, all of our revenue back into our growth. So to recap, 
um, we killed it. <laughs> um, next time, probably bigger goals, bigger dreams. Um, so you might be wondering what's next. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> big picture. I'm really excited to enjoy the stability of what I'm building. I'm embracing risk-taking and growth uh, because it's working. And um, I wanna reach more people. Ultimately, myself and the team, we're helping people change careers and truly making a difference. So we just wanna increase the amount of people we're, we're reaching. So to do that, um, we're embracing organic marketing channels and having way too much fun while doing it. Um, you guys should check us out on, on TikTok. <laughs> um, we are looking into partnership opportunities with businesses and nonprofits. So um, places like the Mom Project or places that are helping vets find new jobs, we want to partner with them so that we can help them see if maybe a design job is a good fit. And um, we are pursuing B2B offerings. So how can we help upskill um, either developers or existing staff in companies? Um, into the UX UI design field. So if you're interested in what we're doing, uh, please feel free to reach out. And also a big thank you to Chris, Ryan, all of the founders that again, um, looked at all my spreadsheets every Wednesday and um, the entire Startout team definitely couldn't have done this um, without you all. Maka, you're absolutely right. You killed it. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, toot your horn for one moment. Um, Maka was a beautiful example um, of just what you can do. Uh, Andre said it in the chat, not uh, your wonderful example of what you can do with, you know, out venture capital, with a profitable business and um, your spreadsheets and your plan and your growth, uh, whether you know it or not, it was inspirational to other members in the cohort and other members in Startout and uh, other um, Growth Lab alumni. FYI, I've heard it a lot from other people that, has met, that have met you. So um, you are an inspiration. You are absolutely killing it. And Tom also said, go bigger. So, you know, if Tom says so then, but um, congratulations, um, you really did a spectacular job. And um, I think everybody benefited from your spreadsheets. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maka. Um, amazing to see your progress. Um, incredibly proud of you. And uh, I'm really, really happy that we have you as part of the community. I am so appreciative with how you've connected with other alumni from the other cohorts. And I look forward to seeing you um, come back for you know the alumni weeks or maybe your own talk in future cohorts. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Chris, I will let you wrap things up. Awesome. Yeah, and we have, so both Oscar and Maka did such great jobs of their 18 month plan. They're gonna be leading a lunch and learn for cohort nine uh, on uh, the 18 month plan that every cohort member will be performing for the next um, six months. With that said, a final um, comment about uh, Growth Lab. We have our next cohort starting uh, early December. Um, anybody on the phone or on the Zoom that doesn't know about it and is an entrepreneur and has a business, please go to our website. Applications are due by the 30th. Uh, we'd love for you to apply and Ryan and I will be reviewing your applications. Um, so that's cohort nine, cohort eight. Thank you. You got a tear out of me. It's no tear till Tuesday. Sorry, Tom, I failed you on that. Uh, this is a very special moment for myself and Ryan. I know Andres and the whole Startout team and Tom, we are just so thankful for you to participate. We are so grateful that you have the desire to kind of pay it forward and that you have the ability to give us your all. And every single company has done that. So, um, Thank you very much, Tom, Andres, Startout, Growth Lab, Ryan. 
Uh, way to go on a happy graduation cohort number eight. And we look forward to seeing you all again for those in attendance. Thank you. Uh, go to the website, go to startout.org. We have amazing information on the Growth Lab and all the other programs. You heard about Network Q, which really helped John on lead sourcing become a member, look at the services. People also mentioned um, office hours and networking and mentoring, it's all there. Um, so come participate and come join. Everybody cohort eight, thank you. Um, have a great night, wonderful event. Great job, Chris, great job, Ryan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Congrats, Thanks. founders.